Hello, I'm David Kerr, Professor of Cancer Medicine at University of Oxford. I'd like to talk today a little about something specific and generic around guidelines. Um, Annals of Oncology, my old journal, has just published, I think, an outstanding set of guidelines um, delivered by the ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology um, Guidelines Group. It's around the management of toxicities from immunotherapy, and it's the ESMO Clinical Practice Guideline for Diagnosis, Treatment and Follow-up, um, delivered by uh, Dr. Hannan uh, and a course of uh, uh, and a number of colleagues on behalf of the, the wider committee. Um, ha have a look at it. I, I'm not going to talk about the detail of it. It's just very well written. It's very clear, very obviously evidence-based, of course, but but lots of helpful hints and a very clear blueprint as to how we should better manage the um, the, the myriad of potential side effects from immunotherapy. It tells us a little about the basis of the science, some of the mechanistic work that's going on in allowing us to understand why some people react in such different ways, almost as if their immune systems are primed to overreact. But, but it gives a very helpful indeed um, stepwise um, look at how we best diagnose, manage, and in the longer term follow up um, patients who have problems with these um, very important drugs. I mean, all of us recognise the extraordinary impact they've made across a wide range of different tumour types. And therefore, as um, practising oncologists, as healthcare professionals in the field, all of us need to understand better the, um, the, the details as to how we better care for our patients on these drugs. So, so have a look at it. It's, it's well written, um, useful, um, and I, I, I think it's a sort of document that I'll turn to when I'm looking for, um, you know, refreshers, advice in the future. That's the specific, the generic. Um, is is about guidelines. I was one of the many, many, many years ago one of the architects of the British National Cancer Plan, and for me there were four simple principles at that stage in our uh, development of. Um, how we would improve the delivery of cancer control in the United Kingdom. And it was around um, site specialisation, particularly of our surgical colleagues, who, who embraced this with vigour, God bless them. Um, it was using guidelines to help um, level up the, the quality of treatment that, that, that we were giving. Um, uh, of course, underpinned by um, research, um, and using, one would hope, modern IT and telecommunications to improve the networking that we use to deliver multidisciplinary cancer care, one of the key elements. So guidelines were embedded in that. And a couple of years ago, we did a, um, a survey of um, cancer physicians around the world. Um, almost 30 different countries were represented and we asked which guidelines were most used. And it, it, was, it, it was a very interesting, uh, very interesting set of responses. And the three dominant guidelines, this will surprise no one, are the NCCN, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network Guidelines, um, the ESMO Guidelines, and ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology. And rather than selecting one and one being completely dominant, what seemed to be the case is that our, our, our colleagues around the world dipped in and used all three. So um, uh, they may prefer NCCM for some particular tumor type or, or, or some particular aspect of how they're structured. But, but at the same time, they would dip into the ESMA guidelines for specific bits of help and the ASCO guidelines. Um, I, I find this fascinating. I, I assume that in different regions, depending on um, how they were affiliated you know, in terms of additional training or links to Europe or links to the US, that one or other of these guideline groups would, would predominate. But no, in each country, um, in each region, the, given the large data bank that we have of guidelines now, it's a sort of pick and mix um, uh, situation. I, I took 
uh, so initially surprised, but then took comfort from it. There's nothing I hate more than the wasted energy of reduplication and saying, well, come on, if there is one guideline set that, that does truly or command the attention of the world, then the other should stop. It's wasted energy. It's something that none of us can afford. But but the fact that each of these um, um, trusted, um, evidence-based, beautifully presented guideline groups um, is used in different ways, um, I think was important. And a message to the guideline groups of me saying thank you for your professionalism, for the hard work of hundreds of um, cancer specialists from all different um, specialties, um, their contribution to developing these guidelines, it's worth it, it's working, people are using them and they're making a difference. And it's all about leveling up the quality of cancer care that we deliver. So specifically, have a look at the ESMO immune guidelines. They're great, they're, you find them helpful. And, and genetically, thanks to all of you for contributing and working so hard to make these data available to improve the quality of cancer care around the world. Thanks for listening as always. Interested in any comments that you might have, but for the time being, Medscapers, ahoy. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.